Penn State football gets a commit to the class of 2023, another offensive line prospect as they build out the future under offensive line coach Phil Troutwine, and he's a big one. Six foot four, 328 pound Joshua Miller out of Life Christian Academy. We'll get to his strengths and weaknesses here on the show, get to some areas he needs to develop, and his projection going forward as a player who plays right tackle at his high school, but will most likely play on the interior with some flexibility about where that happens. We'll get to all of that in a little bit. First off, make sure you subscribe to bluewhiteillustrated.com so you can get these this information before it even comes out. You get the information from our insider, Ryan Snyder, and get the reporting from Greg Pickle. They do a great job covering recruiting, Penn State football, and more. And of course, if you like this video, give the video a like, subscribe to Blue White Illustrated on YouTube, and we'll give you film analysis, in-depth looks at players beyond just the star ranking and the rating, give you what their game is and how they play. So subscribe and hit the notification button so that the Monday of Christmas, which is when I'm recording this, you don't miss anything. And you know you're in the know for Penn State football. Okay, so let's take a look at Joshua Miller and see where he's ranked. 361st player in the nation, according to On3. Interior offensive lineman, 20th ranked in uh, the class. And in Virginia, he's the 8th overall player. Again, uh, he is a right tackle right now in high school, but he'll be moving to the interior at 6'4". Doesn't have the length and some of the other things that I'll show you in just a second to play on the outside, but that projection, I think, makes him a little bit underrated as far as his skills translating to the next level. And for Penn State football fans that want to see Penn State run the football, here's what you're getting. You're getting a low pad level and a powerful, violent blocker. Look at this. I'm going to just pause this because I love this right here. That low pad level, that flat back to tack, that is what you're looking for from an offensive lineman to win the point of attack, to win the leverage battle. And he is a big kid in high school, and he is getting lower than the players he's playing against. Domination blocks, moving people off the line of scrimmage, the hip snap, the ability to just toss players, to kick people out of the hole, and his ability to combo block, down block, and then get to the second level to open up big holes in the run game. And like I said, pad level, hip drive, the power is obvious in his frame. At 328 pounds, he's an intimidation blocker in high school, and that's the sort of DNA you want to start with if you're Penn State football under Phil Troutwine. That's been pretty clear so far in the guys he's recruited or that he's tried to recruit. That's the profile of even guys like Drew Shelton, who's an, an elite-level athlete by the way he runs, the first thing you notice is they want to intimidate on the offensive line. And with all of the other things that I think he does, he's got a good start in his technical fundamentals as an offensive lineman. Uh, I don't think he runs his feet too much. You have to be a little bit more controlled. You have to be deliberate with your foot placement and your balance. I think he does those things at a pretty consistent level already. Now, with Every young player, nothing's perfect, and we'll get to some of the, the little warts here and there, but the burst out of his stance. For a guy who's 328 pounds, I get a little nervous when they're that big, that young. What is it that, they're, that their body composition is? And I think it's good. You can see here the ability to get to the second level, to get his initial block, follow the play, and the effort to then get downfield and shove guys out. I, I love watching that. And then you see just the straight burst out of his stance on a zone block, you need to be able to do that in Penn State's zone blocking schemes, and he shows the quickness to win at the point of a tap, the, the initial snap. I like the way he addresses players on the second level, where he shows the ability to uh, not just run up there, like you saw in one of those clips, but actually get to the point of contact and make contact. A lot of times, big physical intimidation blockers those road graders, when they get to the second level against quicker players, they tend to lunge. And, and maybe there's a little bit of that, and let's just get to that right now, but it's not consistently a problem on film. The problem for Miller really is that if he misses, he misses big because he's going all out on some of these blocks. And that's something you don't want to see. This is the Catholic defensive end, by the way. Keep an eye on him because he gave Miller a lot of fits in this game with speed and quickness. And that's really where Miller is going to have to improve is just you you want to see the effort and the and the intensity and you're not going to tell him not to block this way for this reason, but you just have to make sure you don't lose big. So the the technique, the pad level, the consistency and the footwork to not overextend himself because that is a part of the profile and you want that by the way. As a young blocker, you want somebody who at his size 
as he grows and matures, that's going to lessen and his ability to play with more quickness, to reshape his body even further from what it is now, which is very good, by the way, for somebody that young to be 325, 330 pounds and not be carrying a lot of bad weight. I don't see that on film, and the quickness will only enhance as he gets older and more mature. So that's all really good. It's just keeping an eye on on making sure that those big whiffs don't happen consistently. And I'm just showing you when it does happen. It doesn't happen a lot for Joshua Miller. Now, as a pass protector, he's playing, again, at tackle. So some of this stuff is not going to look perfect, but I think his technique and his short sets and some of this stuff really looks good for a guy who is, you know, at a disadvantage at that position. That's a good example of somebody seeing a stunt as a young player, communicating it and passing it off. Here he is short setting, catching and and using great base and great anchor. And just like as a as a run blocker, if he gets his hands on you, it's over and he can redirect and control while in control of his own body movements. So when it's a good rep, you see all the good footwork, you see the mechanics, you see the the attention to detail. I really, really like his pass sets because just imagine him as an interior blocker and you can see that if he's not having to guard the edge, there is no room to get around him. He's got good length, he's got great size, and his ability to control with power, he's going to be able to get his hands on more players more often. Now this last part is really just descriptive of his position move to the inside because you look at that size in high school and you go, that's a he looks good. Why would you move him inside? Penn State needs help at tackle. But it's when he plays against speed that a lot of this stuff shows up and where I think it's the biggest indicator that he's going to move to the interior is, again, this is the game against a math Catholic where he, uh, was, uh, he, he struggled with his defensive end against speed. And that's either run or pass. It's that's where he's got to make his next step. And as an interior lineman, he's not going to be put in so many bad situations by uh, his play style and his abilities. So I'm not terribly concerned about this, but it is a part of his profile that we do need to show you as somebody who is not going to project to tackle. And you've got to make sure that uh, you keep an eye on these things because there are quick defensive tackles as well. So he's not going to get away from speed entirely when he moves to the inside. It's just going to be about the consistency with which he's able to play at that position. And again, he's a young player. So a lot of these things may not even be that he's losing with quickness. He's just not uh, playing with anticipation. And that's something entirely different from the mental aspect of having film to watch, uh, having professional level coaching. I think his coaching is very good on the high school level, but it's just that next level of knowledge that I think he's really missing when it comes to his pass protection and his pass sets of knowing when to when to uh, come downhill on guys and when to shut the door on the interior. He's so focused on on protecting the edge. And he should be that there's some of those gaps that open up. So I'm not terribly concerned about his play versus speed. And that's where I think when you project him going forward to the interior, you've got a big physical low player that's going to be able to help combo with the center on those inside zone blocks and actually open up holes on the interior. That's and a lot of uh, what Penn State does in their power game where they're coming downhill and man blocking. He's going to be good at that as well. One thing that he did not do in high school that I'm curious to see is I did not see him pull. And if he plays on the interior, a lot of Penn State's uh, power schemes, they have counter and power where they need uh, an alignment to have the athleticism to open his hips and run laterally quickly and pull and get to the point of attack and not miss the target. So I need to see that on film at some point. But with his other profile, it's a burst off the offensive line, at least going forward, you feel good about that. He chose Penn State over Clemson and uh, other top schools, so I think that's another good sign that Penn State is getting a guy that is underrated that a lot of teams that run similar schemes are interested in bringing into the program. So going forward, what he needs to work on simply is continuing to play the way he does, to continue to refine his body, and to continue to focus on uh, the the initial point of contact and the initial uh, snap. Once he once he gets those a little more consistent and he doesn't have those big losses, 
there's really not a lot of holes in his game as far as projecting him to the interior. So Penn State football picks up another big commitment in the class of 2023 for their offensive line, and that is the film room for Joshua Miller. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. Make sure you subscribe to Blue White Illustrated here on YouTube and, of course, again, at bluewhiteillustrated.com. And if you hit the notification button, you won't miss another T. Frank's film room.